Alright, welcome back again. The vid the other one I had accidentally stopped it. Alright, so picking up right where that one has left off, we can see that the Benedict solution it has now changed to green. So once you get a green color, once it changes, right? So here it is green. Now depending on the amount of copper, two ions that are reduced that will d determine the color change so this means that the aldehyde only a few amount of copper ions were oxidized because it was a small amount of the aldehyde present hence only a small amount of copper two ions were reduced if a lot of it was reduced then you would have gotten the brick red color now if you look here as you can see now, that same reaction with the potassium per manganate, it has gone completely colorless. Right? Same for the other one. Right? So we can see that the aldehyde was oxidized. So we definitely got an aldehyde. Alright, so now I'm going to do the setup for the reflux. So I wish pause here and show you after I have completed it all right before I stop I'm going to add the potassium the dichromate to the reaction mixture all right so that will be our reaction mixture the aldehyde and potassium dichromate all right so you can see all right that by the time I have started it back, the color has already changed, which means that the process of oxidation has already begun. Alright. So that is how we set it up for reflux. The condenser is placed directly into the own bottom flask. All right so once it starts to evaporate it will not be able to escape and so it will condense and fall back into the mixture well that if it was if we started out with the alcohol so the aldehyde will be oxidized to the carboxylic acid so this is the setup for reflux versus distillation so with reflux your product is not a nothing is able to escape from the reaction mixture remember earlier with distillation when the aldehyde are vaporized right we condense it and collect it right in this one when it condenses, it is falling back into the reaction mixture. That means all of our aldehyde will be converted to carboxylic acid. All right. So I'm going to pause here until it actually starts to vaporize. So now you can see that the mixture is the liquid is falling back into the round bottom flask all right so it vaporizes but it cannot escape and so it is condensing back into the conical flask all right so that's basically it for the procedure of reflux all right so what happens as the fume goes up into the condenser the water the allows it because it is cold all right the vapor condenses and as you can see again it is falling back into the reaction mixture so if i start out with a primary alcohol so if we have if we're doing the alcohol right the reason why I did not do reflux for the alcohol 
is because we wanted the aldehyde. Now, if we had done the reflux, the aldehyde would have been converted to the carboxylic acid. Right? So that is why we did distillation. So once the aldehyde was produced, we collected it. Right? So this is how you do reflux. All right? So if you have a primary alcohol, you can oxidize it to an aldehyde. And if you want the aldehyde, you do condense, you do distillation. If you, want the, if you want it to go straight to a carboxylic acid, this is the setup. So this is reflux. So the difference between reflux and the distillation, with the reflux, the vapor is not allowed to escape the reaction mixture. As you can see, it condenses and is coming back into the reaction mixture. All right? But with distillation, your vapor is allowed to escape the reaction mixture. But when it escapes the reaction mixture, you are able to collect it. All right, so this is reflux. The one before was distillation. And as you can see, the aldehyde has reacted with the potassium dichromate. So we have successfully converted the ethanol, or a primary alcohol, to the aldehyde and in this reaction now we are converting the aldehyde to the carboxylic acid all right so that's it for this video remember to like subscribe share comment all of those all right